Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Well, as the name of the video suggests, our beloved 1968 Dodge Charger is finally back. Now, believe me, for the last year, year and a half or so, I have seen, I have heard, I have replied to each and every one of your guys' comments. Where's the Charger? Where's the Charger? Where's the damn Charger? Well, the Charger's here. We have some amazing parts that are here as well. And frankly, after making you guys wait way too long, we are finally going to finish this car. Now, going back a couple years, you know, when I first started my YouTube channel, this was the car that started it all. And frankly, I owe, you know, pretty much most of my subscribers to this build. And, you know, I don't think that there is a more comprehensive 68 to 70 charger restoration or resurrection, as I like to call it, on YouTube than what we did to this car. You know, this car, I purchased it from the original owner. He parked it in 1978 in the middle of the woods in Ohio. And frankly, it damn near rotted to the ground. Okay, so dug this thing out of the woods. We went through everything on it. And, uh, you know, we've essentially rebodied almost this entire car. And it's been a lot of work, but you know what? We've still got several hundred hours of work left on this thing. We've got some metal work to finish up. We got body work. We got paint work. We've got assembly work. We've got a lot of work. To do on this thing and uh, I can't wait to document it all and take you all along for the ride so if you guys have been waiting thank you so much for waiting if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing because there's a lot of great stuff coming along the way so let me give you guys a quick rundown of the work that we've done so far now guys looking at this thing it is really hard to put into words of how much work has gone into this car how much money has been spent on this thing and frankly how much time goes into something like this now let me sum it all up by saying the only thing original the only parts that are original on this car the roof the a pillars the rear package tray, the firewall, and the inner uh, window supports in the back seat. Everything else has either come from a different car or has come straight out of the AMD catalog, which frankly I have thrown just about the entire catalog at this car. Now I've had some great friends donate parts along the way. My buddy Scott um, out, of a, out of New York gave me the hood, he gave me the trunk lid, um, gave me the front valance. Um, yeah, we've, I've had some great friends, um, you know, reach out and offer parts up to help this build along, which is much, much appreciated. Um, my buddy Jim Saab ended up giving me the front clip that this car has. Now, this car looks clean. Let me just tell you, that is the front clip from a 1968 GTX. I actually took the frame rails, we took the torsion support, we put it on the brand new cowl panel that we put on this car, and, uh, yeah, basically took two cars and made them into one. Now, a lot of you guys out there may take issue with how much metal has been replaced on this car. And, you know, it's kind of sad that a few of you would rather see this car rot into the ground than to see this thing back on the road and to do what I've done to this car. But, like I said, these cars are getting super, super expensive. And, frankly, the price is kind of getting out of hand. <laughs> And the average guy really can't afford to buy one of these cars anymore and, uh, you know, restore it. So you can spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 on a car that still needs, you know, full metal work, that still needs, you know, frankly, almost an entire rebody. And it's kind of crazy. But, you know, taking a look here inside the trunk, it does kind of suck to see, um, you know, some surface rust here. But this car has sat for quite a long time and there was some exposed bare metal here but you know like I mentioned the next step for this thing we're gonna be blasting it we're gonna be epoxying this thing getting it all into one color so that way we can really start fine-tuning tweaking the last of the metal work we can get this thing into body work and get it closer to actually painting the car so taking a look here at the inside of the car these doors I actually picked up I want to say they were uh, Facebook marketplace or Craigslist fine but um, original 68 doors actually still have like the you can see the Texaco sticker here which is really cool um, but I want to say these doors fully loaded I got them for like three or four hundred bucks and I think we reskinned one if not both of these but they're in excellent shape and uh, yeah, some of the cleaner metal on the car. <laughs> but taking a look here, like I mentioned, you guys can see which panels are original. You know, I have a, uh, for some strange reason, every single one of the Mopars I get are green. So, yeah, you guys can see here the rear package tray. And, uh, you know, everything else is AMD sheet metal. So, it's all gone together really nice. Our door's shut. Excellent. 
just like they should, but uh, you know, we've still got a lot of cleanup to do. And let me just tell you guys, this is not going to be your average paint job. Okay, this is going to be, <laughs> for the most part, a full custom car. The bodywork's gonna be laser straight. Um, it's gonna look very, very smooth, and uh, can't wait to paint this thing. Now, I need your guys' input on a few different things. So, like I mentioned, every single car I get is green. The Saudi, the Cuda, uh, the Charger, other cars that I have in queue right now are freaking green. And I know you guys voted on this thing a while back, and you guys want it in F8 green. I left it up to you guys to come up with the color. I am not going to paint this car green. I refuse. I'm sorry. If you want to unsubscribe now, go ahead. But we're not going to paint this car green. So drop in the comments below what color you guys think that we should paint this car. I'll take a tally, and uh, as long as it ain't green, I'm going to follow your guys' advice and uh, paint this car now this car also does have the mini tubs, which I did a pretty extensive DIY on. I think those cost me about 20 bucks to make. So check out that video guys if you're interested. We also did a leading tutorial. These are leaded panels. Showed you guys how to do that. Um, as well as this car has the full stage three US car tools chassis stiffening kit. So it's got subframe connectors, it's got the fender braces, it's got everything on it. Spring relocation kit with the uh, mini tubs also went in so we can fit some really, really wide wheels in the back. But all that work has been done and it is so nice to be starting this car with where it is today because it is absolutely going to fly from here. Now a couple other changes with this build that I definitely wanted to share with you guys. First and foremost, the engine. So originally this car was gonna be the 6.1 Hemi with a six speed turnkey pallet. I picked it up from Cleveland Power and Performance. We had it here in the shop, I actually made a video on it because it's an awesome setup. And uh, yeah, unfortunately that engine has been sold. So don't worry, it did go to a good cause. It ended up funding a lot of the CUDA project and helping move that project along. But uh, so yeah, having to start from scratch, I reached out to a good buddy of mine. A lot of you guys know him as Just Mopar Joe on YouTube. He has a tremendous channel. The guy's a wealth of knowledge. He helped build the engine for the Saudi, and he is helping me build a big block stroker for this car, and he's gonna fully document it on his channel. So if you haven't done so yet, definitely go out, subscribe to his channel, follow along, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to go pick it up and put it in the car. And another first for the channel is going to finally be having a car with a manual transmission. So my buddy Jeremy over at Shade Tree Vintage Auto hooked me up with an 18 spline four speed, an original 68 to 70 B body part, and I cannot wait to finally have a car that I can shift gears in. <laughs> Um, you know, every car that we've had so far has been a 727 car, which they've all been great, but uh, actually having something that we can bang some gears around in is going to be a welcome change to the channel. Now, just like I have on all the other builds, I am running the full QA1 front and rear suspension setup on this car. So full tubular everything, sway bars, coilovers, uh, tubular upper and lowers. Um, power rack and pinion as well as six piston will woods. You know, this is an amazing kit that they provide here. It's every single component, everything that you need with the big block engine mounts, bolts right up and uh, what an awesome setup. You know, it's definitely built to withstand the abuse um, and also the power that I plan on putting down with this car. You guys saw me beat the hell out of the Saudi a couple weeks ago in Vegas and it held up absolutely phenomenal. So really happy, again, really proud also to have the support and the help from QA1 and uh, I absolutely love running their products. Now shifting gears here a little bit, looking at the rear end, we also have a Dana 60 with a 410 with the spool already set up, ready to go. We will be going through this whole thing though. We've got a disc brake conversion to do on this as well as running all brand new brake lines. We'll be going through new bearings, new seals, new everything on the inside of it. But uh, wow, what an awesome setup for an absolutely awesome car. Well, as you can see, there's a lot of great parts going into this car and some amazing friends that are helping make it happen. And I can't wait to share each and every step of it with each and every one of you. So if you're wondering what comes next, well, as soon as I finish up filming here, I'm gonna immediately get to work. As you can see, the car is already in the lift bay. We're gonna get it up. We're gonna get the QA1 front and rear suspension installed in the car. We're gonna put the Dana in. We're gonna put brakes on it. We're gonna turn it into a roller for the first time in almost 50 years. Crazy to think that it's been off the road for that long. I mean, it's a 68 Charger. Um, it should be on the road. It should definitely be seen. It should be driven. 
hard, right? <laughs> so yeah, it deserves to be out there and uh, I can't wait to share it with you guys. So if you have not done so yet, definitely hit that subscribe button. You're not gonna wanna miss a minute of this build. We got body work coming up, paint work, everything in between, full interior, full engine build, all of it's coming to you guys. And uh, I promise I will not make you guys wait too long for the next episode. So stay tuned. I'll see y'all again real soon. Yeah.